الحمد لله ثم الحمد لله رب العالمين ولعاقبة المتقين نستعينه ونستحيه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم بعد أسيكم نفسي أسيكم نفسي في تقوى الله فقد فاز المتقون وقال الله تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا أتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تنوتون إلا وأنتم مسلمون We begin by praising Allah and seeking His assistance, His guidance, His forgiveness, proclaiming our belief and our trust in Him. Whomsoever Allah gives guidance, the Quran tells us, whomsoever Allah gives guidance, none can misguide that person. And those whom Allah has not provided guidance cannot be provided guidance by any. We affirm that Allah alone does His worship, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that he has sent prophets and messengers throughout time. And we affirm that this process has concluded with the coming of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the Friday khutbah, the Friday uh, sermon, we often hear uh, in the beginning of, of the khutbah, and I did recite it, although I didn't recite the, uh, the English yet. We often hear proclamations encouraging us to have taqwa. And obviously taqwa or reverence for God, awareness of God, obviously taqwa is an important subject or an important theme in the Quran and the Sunnah. Also a regular occurrence in the Friday khutbah Especially whenever I am uh, speaking, or not always, but pretty often when I speak, is we tend to relate information or stories regarding the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam on how he, meaning the Prophet peace be upon him, how he was able to transform the thinking and to transform the mentality of the society that he was in. But we talk about that. Practically, how did he do it? I would like to propose that the answer to that is found within an important aspect of religion. Meaning that Islam is no different from other religions in this regard. All religions have this particular thing in common. But Islam has, has it put in a, in a pretty special way. That Islam is what I will call a social religion. The nature of Islam is a social nature. And what do we mean by that? Well, when we pray, when we, when we will pray in a few minutes or a half hour or so, when we pray, we are not going to pray individually, rather we're going to pray in jama'ah. We're going to have this prayer in congregation. And obviously jama'ah and jama'ah, obviously they are from the same root. They both have to do with, with, uh, with uh, coming together, with uh, joining something. It has to do with togetherness. And the jama'ah, pray, praying the, 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 the jama'ah is so important. It's so important that when we pray, we pray two rak'ahs. We don't pray for rakahs, rather we pray two, two rakahs. 
And if by chance someone arrives at the masjid and the the jama the 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 juma prayer has already occurred, the person came late, then he has to pray four rakats of Zuhr. He cannot pray the juma because it's not juma anymore for him. And if uh, just as if a person is at work, he can't come to the to the prayer. Or he's at home and just can't come to the to the prayer. And it's Friday. He doesn't pray two rakahs. He has to pray four rakahs. But here we have to pray two rakahs. Everybody knows that. Even if we don't know about the particular hadith or the particular uh, uh, rulings by practice. By necessity, we know that. Even if we don't understand the sources or know the sources behind that, we know that by, by this normal Islamic life or normal Islamic practice. But there is yet another thing. Is that we have five daily prayers and we tend, most of us, we tend to pray them in, in, our, in our job or we pray them at our home or we pray them wherever. But we have it in Islam the importance of saying, offering the same prayer again in Jama'ah. So, other than just Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, offering the say, offering the five day prayers in Jama'ah in the Masjid, in Jama'ah in congregation. <coughs> in Al Bukhari and Muslim, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is reported to have said Salatu jama'ati aftala min salatu fiddi bi sab'i wa 20 daraja The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam says that congregational prayer is 27 times better in status than offering that same prayer as a single person and we have other ahadith and we have other uh, uh, reflections from the Sahaba, from the companions of the Prophet, and from the uh, Tabi'een. We have other reflections that have the same basic import, telling us the importance of praying in congregation together. Why? It is because, why is prayer in congregation Consider it more valuable than praying that the same prayer, offering the same prayer by yourself. The answer to that is that praying together, praying in jama'ah, it becomes the basis for forming strong relationships. And it is relationships with people. It is relationships with, with fellow believers. It is this more than any other factor. It is this which plants the seeds of reform or plants the seeds of becoming better, plants the seeds of reformation. It's being around people who have the same belief, uh, being around people who are experiencing the same struggles. To use a silly example, I know this is a silly example, but I'm going to use it anyway. You cannot expect to, if, if a person has, uh, uh, he has a habit of cocaine, of using cocaine. He cannot, he or she cannot expect to drop that habit if they are on a regular basis with the people who are doing cocaine. Because obviously their actions will influence them. So the relationships that are formed as a, as a consequence of praying together, of being together, it is this which forms a, which is a, which forms a foundation or forms a potential as a foundation for reform or for change in, in the person, in the life. And again, well, going back to, the, the, um, uh, to alcohol, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا تكرب الصلاة وأنتم سكرا Don't come to prayer while in a state of drunkenness. Isn't that right? 
You don't want other people to see you in your distaste. So Allah gives this revelation first before He gives the absolute prohibition of 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 the of alcohol. Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu. إِنَّ مَا الْخَمْرُ وَمَيْسِرُ وَانْسَوْ وَجْمَعَ مَا الشَّيْطَانُ فَاشْتَنِبُوهُ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ So it is the relationships that, the, the bonds that are formed with believers, with sincere believers, that allow us to change or allow us to become reformed. Now it may happen in a slow pace, or it may happen in a fast pace, but it does happen. And Besides that, bonds with sincere believers that cross that that, that cross uh, cla uh, ethnic lines, that cross class lines, and even to, in certain respects to, to to cross sectarian lines, relationships are formed and and and, and strengthened, even across these divisions, by the act of offering prayers together. So, the outgrowth of that, the outgrowth of this subject is that Muslim men need to marry Muslim women. And Muslim women need to marry Muslim men. Looking, now we're trying to look at big picture. How else are Muslim men going to marry Muslim women, and Muslim women are going to marry Muslim men, how else is that going to happen? Except by having ties with fellow believers in the Mosque of Allah. Similarly, our children need friendships. They need to play with other children, other Muslim children. This isn't to say that there's something wrong with non-Muslim children. I don't want to uh, give that sort of impression but nonetheless Muslims have to have social relations with each other so I uh, I encourage you but I also encourage myself to Pray more in the mosque, not just the Friday prayer. I encourage you, as I encourage myself, to pray more in the mosque through the week. And perhaps most importantly, is to become strong, become uh, connected in a deeper and a stronger way to those who have iman, to those who have its sincerity. Be connected to them. And start to look at any, any mosque that you are a part of. Look at it the way Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked at his mosque, at his masjid. It was looked at or treated as a community center. It was treated as a community center. A place where believers can develop and cultivate healthy ties. Healthy ties cannot be cultivated in a bar. Healthy, healthy ties cannot be cultivated in any place in a better way than the mosque of Allah. Than the place where, where, where people will come together. For no other purpose except the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَأَنَّ الْمَسَاجِ لِلَّهِ فَلَا تَدْعُوا مَعَ اللَّهِ أَحَدًا We conclude the first section of the khutbah with a prayer to Allah Jalla Sha'nuhu to join us with the righteous and to not join us with the people of iniquity. أَقَلُوا فَرِ هَذَا وَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم وبعد We need to improve or advance our Islamic status because Islam and by Islam I mean the Islam that is found in the in the book of Allah and the is the Islam that is clearly practiced by the messenger of Allah that's taught by the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam it is Islam really Islam is the only thing that can give us security that can give us peace that can give us salvation forgive me for using the Christian term salvation so, the Quran, Allah, Allah says in the Quran, أَدْخُلُوا فِي سِلْمِ Enter into submission totally, completely. So, taking half of a medicine that the, the doctor has prescribed is not going to cure your illness. Your illness is only cured when you take all of the medicine that the doctor has prescribed. So, what the this, the uh, the third thing that I'm reaching at, or the, the third point I want to make in this is that our thinking, our thinking, has to be in constant development, meaning that. That if we are Muslims and we're taking this seriously, if we're not taking this seriously, then then these words don't apply. But if we seek to take the if we seek to take Islam seriously, then we have to be willing and able to grow Islamically. And I don't mean just and and wearing uh, wearing a certain clothing. And, and being able to, uh, to out-argue people. I don't mean necessarily that, but rather I mean is our thinking has to become more in line with the Quran and the Sunnah. The way we, the, our worldview, the way we see things has to be in line or in accordance with the worldview that is proposed by Allah and His Prophet. So what accomplishes this? One of the things that accomplishes this is social ties. But there has to be social ties, social ties, social relationships with the right people. Because our views can be corrected if we are around the right people to correct our views. And opportunities emerge when we are around the right people. Even if I just use a worldly perspective uh, from a worldly basis, the opportunities for employment, the opportunities for business, the opportunities for marriage, the opportunity, all the worldly things that we seek and look, go after. Those worldly benefits or the, or the potential to achieve those worldly benefits increase when we are around the right people. And what better people to be around than the people of taqwa? And as we said in the beginning of the khutbah, وَلَعَاكِبَةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ Allah says that the, that the end is best, like the, 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 the final outcome, the best outcome is best for for those who have taqwa, lil muttaqin, wal aqibatu lil muttaqin is mentioned three or four times in the Quran. So, if it is possible to stop by the masjid, or any masjid for that matter, during your week for prayer, then do so. And most importantly, 
connect with those who can help us to develop Islamically. I would dare say that after Jumu'ah is over, at least say salam to the brother to your right and to your left. I'm not telling you to give me your credit card information. You can give me your credit card information. It'll be safe, I promise you. But to the person you don't know, at least say salam alaikum, my name is such and such. You know, nice to meet you. At least that. The alternate side of not connecting to the right people, or I should say the alternate side of this, is to avoid the company of those who cannot help us to develop Islamically. Avoid the, pe the, the company of those who, knowingly or unknowingly, seek to hold us back. Seek to keep us away from Allah. They seek to keep us away from Allah's guidance. There are such people, there are such, I shouldn't, I shouldn't say people, but there are such forces, there are such influences out there in the world that really seek. And sometimes it happens in, in petty, small ways, and sometimes it happens in major ways. Let me share this, uh, this story. I've, I've heard various, variations of the same story from different people. They mean they've all experienced this. Someone accepting Islam and they are with friends, in quotation marks, or with family, in quotation marks, and they sneak some bacon or sneak some, sneak some pork into their food. They want to trick them into eating pork. That's a really silly, immature thing to do. But my point here is, is essentially, look, if we are around such people, who, have, who cannot respect even that. He cannot respect that we don't want to eat pork. And that try to force you or sneak you, sneak, uh, sneak some food, some haram food into your system. Out of a joke, then those persons are not really your friends. Those persons or those people are not going to help you to develop your, spiritually. They're not gonna help you develop morally. They're not gonna help you develop uh, mentally or intellectually. The lives of the prophets of God, with no exception, alayhim as -salam, the lives of the prophets of God, when you read the stories of the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as given in the Quran, They all, all of the prophets faced opposition. And not just political opposition, but all of the, all of the prophets of Allah, and especially the, the, the followers of the prophets of Allah, because their followers are obviously weaker than the prophet. They faced opposition to their development and to their progress, meaning their opponents were opposed to them growing as people who would be submissive to Allah. Why is it someone else's business whether you submit to Allah or not? But for some people they say this is their, it's their business. And they try to put hurdles in stopping you from connecting to your God, to the one and only God. And so the opposition comes in many forms. But we have to strive sincerely. We have to strive sincerely, truthfully, correctly in Allah's cause to not go and conquer people. You know, people want to create an Islamic Khilafah or something. You don't have to create an Islamic Khilafah. You have to conquer yourself. As Rasulullah said, alayhi salatu wasalam, al-mujahidu man jahada nafsahu. The mujahid, the person who makes jihad, who is the, the Prophet's definition of that, alayhi salatu wasalam, al-mujahidu man jahada nafsahu. 
is the one who makes jihad upon himself. So, we have to strive. And we, we can't give up until death. <laughs> to be honest, we can't give up until we're dead. To, to grow in our dedication and our, uh, and our seeking to be connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To, to, to have not only sound body, but sound mind. So we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He gives us not only sound body, but sound mind. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He uh, strengthen us upon this deen. Ya muqallib al qulub thabi qulubana ala deenik. Allahumma anu haqqa haqqa zukna tiba'a. Wa anu lil baatil baatil zukna shinaaba. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana. Wa fi al akhati hasana. وقنا عذاب النار ربنا لا تجعلنا مع القوم الظالمين ربنا أمنا فاكتبنا مع الشاهدين ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد حتيتنا وحب لنا من لدوك رحمة إنك أنت الوحاب ربنا إنك جامع الناس ليوم لا ريب فيه إن الله لا يخف ميعاد سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين وأقيم الصلاة إن الصلاة كانت على المؤمنين كتابا موقوتا الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله